we have already learned about units. And we learned that in chemistry, in the natural sciences, we use the SI units as our units. However, you also know that there are different unit systems. For instance, the English system is very prevalent in the United States. So it happens quite often that we have to convert a number expressed in one unit system into a number expressed in a different unit system. So we have to convert one unit to another unit. How do you do that? For instance, how do you convert 2.85 centimeters into inches? In order to do this, you need to know the relation between centimeters and inches. That relation, fortunately, is known. It's given right here. One inch equals 2.54 centimeters. I can use this relation for the conversion. How do you do that? Well, there's a very general mechanism that always works. And this is how it, how it works. I take the left-hand side of the equation above, and I divide 2.54 by itself. And if you do that, you get 1. But if you divide the left-hand side of the equation by 2.54 centimeters, you also have to divide the right-hand side by 2.54 centimeters, like this. 1 inch divided by 2.54 centimeters also equals 1. So this factor here I call a unit factor. And this unit factor is extremely useful for converting one number expressed in one unit into a number expressed in a different unit. So, 2.85 centimeters, if I multiply that with this unit factor, like this, I notice that the centimeter unit can cross out. You see, centimeter appears both in the numerator and in the denominator, which means I can cross that out. And when you cross that out, your answer is going to be expressed in the remaining unit, which is inches. So in this case, if you divide 2.85 by 2.54, times one inch, you'll find 1.12 inches. I've completed my conversion here using the unit factor. So the general rule is as follows. If I have a number A expressed in unit one, and I multiply that with a unit factor that has unit two in the numerator and unit one in the denominator, that means that unit one is gonna cross out. My final answer B is gonna be expressed in unit two. So let's look at a couple of examples. Let's look at length. Let's say I want to convert 10 kilometers into miles. So how many miles is 10 kilometers? In order to complete this calculation, I need to know the relation between kilometers and miles. In this box over here, there are three relations. They relate kilometer to meters, meters to yards, and yards to miles. There's no direct relation here in this box between kilometers and miles, but I can use these relations to sequentially convert kilometer into miles. Let me show you how that works. 10 kilometers, I like to convert first to meters using the first definition here in this box. So I make a unit factor out of the first line, like this. This unit factor has meters on top and kilometers at the bottom, and that implies that the unit of kilometer will strike out. So my number now is expressed in meters. Next, I want to convert meters to yards. So I multiply the result with a unit factor that has yards on top and meters at the bottom. I use the second line in this box. You'll see that meters now will cross out, which means my number here is expressed in yards. The last thing I have to do is to convert yards to miles using the last line in this box. I make a unit factor that has miles on top and yards at the bottom, like this. Now I can strike out yards, and my final answer is going to be expressed in miles. The answer is, is 6.22 miles. Finally, I have to convert this number into a number with the right number of significant figures. Now, the number 10 only has one significant figure, because the zero is a zero that has no decimal point before it, which means a zero is not significant, only the one, digit one, is significant, which means it has one significant figure. That means my number has to be expressed in one significant figure as well. The final answer is six miles. Let's now look at a couple of useful conversions in terms of volume. This box contains 
a number of extremely useful conversions and relations in terms of volume. The first line is a definition of a liter, which is one decimeter cube. We've seen that before. The second line relates liters to quarts. And the third line relates cubic feet to liters. So let me ask you the following question. How many quarts go in 43.0 liters? So I need to know the relation between liters and quarts. What is that? Well, the second line here tells me immediately the relation between quarts and liters. So I'll make a unit factor out of the second line. 43.0 liters times a unit factor that has quarts on top and liters at the bottom, which means liters will strike out. My final answer then is going to be expressed in quarts. If you complete this multiplication, you'll find that the answer is 45.6 quarts. Now let's turn to mass and look at a couple extreme, of extremely useful relations in terms of mass. The first one relates kilograms to pounds. The second line relates pounds to grams. And both these relations are going to be very useful for making mass conversions. For instance, if I ask you how many grams go in 0 0.346 pounds, the answer will be 0 0.346 pounds times a unit factor that relates pounds to grams. I want to go to grams, which means grams appears on the top of my unit factor, and pounds at the bottom, like that, which means pounds will strike out, and my number after the op mathematical operation will be expressed in grams. The answer here is 157 grams. Now, let's apply these conversion techniques to an example right here. This example asks you to convert the number 7.55 centigrams into pounds. It also asks you to express the final answer in scientific notation. So in order to solve this problem, we need to know the relation between centigram and pounds. Now that relation is not immediately clear, but we do know the relation between centigrams and grams and the relation between pounds and grams. So we can write down the following definitions. 1 centigram equals 10 to the minus 2 grams, because centi means 10 to the minus 2, as we've learned. This relation will help you relate centigrams to grams. Second, I'd like to relate grams to pounds, and that we have just seen on the previous slide. 1 pound equals 453.6 grams. These two relations will help us convert 7.55 centigrams into pounds. So let's start with the conversion. I'm going to take my number, 7.55 centigrams, and express that first in grams. That will be 7.55 times 10 to the minus 2 grams, because 1 centigram equals 10 to the minus 2 grams. So now my answer is expressed in grams. I have to convert grams to pounds. So I want to multiply this result by a unit factor that has pounds on top and grams at the bottom like this. This unit factor will convert grams to pounds. So if I complete this multiplication, my calculator will say the answer is 1.6645 times 10 to the minus 4 pounds. We're almost done. The final step we have to do is to convert this number into a number that has the right number of significant figures. The number I started with, 7.55 centigrams, has three significant figures. This number has more. We have to express this number in three significant figures as well. 1.66 times 10 to the minus 4 has the correct number of significant figures and is our final answer expressed in pounds.